Hello everybody, Sean Keenan here, and in this tutorial for Touch Plus, I'm going to show you my method for creating a multitude of fish characters inside of ZBrush, and we're going to go ahead and do a bunch of different characters here, and I'm going to show you some quick methods to going ahead and doing that, um, and also making sure that we get these fish um, pretty much detailed. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, when you launch ZBrush, uh, you get your you know default project folder and window here, and we're just going to simply start with DynaMesh here, and we're going to start off with a simple base mesh. This way we can morph and change that base mesh um, into any fish base that we want, um, just to make sure that we give ourselves um, a fast method to go ahead and get all those fish out. So let's go ahead and just click on this DynaWax 128. Okay, we're going to go ahead here and turn off the floor, making sure that we go ahead and resize our draw size here. Now you can see that I don't have the standard ZBrush UI, um, and that's fine. Uh, you'll just have to, you know, go ahead and use my UI or uh, try and follow along. Um, I'll definitely uh, give you my UI so that you can follow along here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, make sure that we have everything here set up correctly. So with our symmetry on, we want to make sure that we uh, are going to be sized correctly here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my move topology brush. I'm also going to come over here to our tool menu, which is up here, but I'm going to go over here to the side, come down to our geometry tab, take a look at our DynaMesh settings. I'm going to go ahead and turn the project off. I'm also going to turn the blur off. Okay. This way, whenever I DynaMesh anything, um, it's not going to reproject it every single time. So let's go ahead here and start manipulating. We're just going to go ahead and pull this out. Okay. And this is just to make sure that I'm going to have everything set up correctly here. Okay, so at this point I'm going to go ahead and go Z this stuff over to Maya. So let me go ahead and just make sure that I move my output window here off screen while Maya launches here. launched and it's going to bring in our DynaMesh tool here. Okay, and I just want to make sure like I said that our DynaMesh here is um, going to line up correctly. So obviously you see that it comes in and it's fairly small. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale this up a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, so now our um, DynaMesh is going to be at the same uh, axes in Maya so whenever we would if we have to DynaMesh it back to Maya it's always going to be at that same 0 0 0 axis this way whenever we would bring our model over to retopologize um, texture rig and whatever else we can go ahead and do that fairly simple okay but I also want to show you that um, typically whenever you install ZBrush let me go ahead and just clear this off um, if you're like my Maya um, originally, if you would press your Go Z button, you'd go back to ZBrush, and if you had to Go Z it back again to Maya, um, you would launch multiple aspects of Maya. And I actually just um, edited my Go Z button here. I'm going to go ahead and give you my script for this. Let me go ahead and just open up my shelf ed editor real quick. And I'm just going to see if I can't find my Go Z here real quick. I'll show you the command that I edit it to. This way we only launch one version of Maya. So I go ahead and just copy this. Go ahead here and put it in the script editor. This is the script that I'm using for my GoZ button compared to what would be the original. And if I go ahead and show you the original script here, I'll go ahead and just uh, take a look at the GoZ here. You can see the command for the original goes you whenever it installs it's only one line of code um, so whenever you would launch the original goes you it would launch multiple revisions of Maya so uh, I'll make sure that I go ahead and um, put this into a text file so that you guys can edit this and edit your goes button to actually match mine this way you don't have to really worry about um, 
multiple revisions of Maya being launched. So, okay, at this point we're ready to go ahead and jump back over to the ZBrush here. I'm just wanting, like I said, wanted to make sure that everything here is going to line up properly. So I'll just go ahead and go Z back over to uh, ZBrush real quick. Okay, so here you can see that it comes in. It's definitely a little bit bigger than normal. Okay, so everything worked properly. And we're just going to go ahead here and continue to work through our Dynamesh just to make sure that we get a really solid base shape for uh, our fish that we're going to create. We, we're not necessarily worried about um, creating side fins um, or really even top fins. All we basically want is just the base body mesh here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my inflate brush here. And just can continue to work through the Dynamesh to go ahead and create this. You can see I'm just going to use my inflate real quick to go ahead and get this straightened out. It just takes a little bit of patience and time to go ahead and get all this made into our Dynamesh that we want here. Okay, so we'll go ahead here and definitely need to scale the body here just a little bit. And at this point we can probably go ahead and bring in an image as well. So we'll go ahead and use the fish one here. Just double click that image and it'll come into your texture window here. Okay, go ahead and pull that image in. I'm going to go ahead and close the menu here. Just go ahead and scale this down a little bit. Turn the opacity down. And this way I can just go ahead and shape this um, into the base shape that I want. I'm not really worried too much about the um, actual fish main body shape. All I really want is just the uh, semblance of what would be a base fish model here. Okay. And we're going to be doing, like I said, multiple characters here. So we want to make sure that we um, have a really solid base mesh to go ahead and create from. Okay, so let me go ahead and retopologize this real quick. And you can see that, let me go ahead and turn down our subtool there, geometry tab. I'm going to go ahead and turn Dynamesh off. I'm going to go ahead and Z-remesh this at uh, 5 for our poly target polygons count. I'm not going to turn on half or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and Z-remesh this real quick. Also making sure that that adaptive is off. So there you can see that it's kicking through a little bit. Okay. So now we get a um, decent retopologization of our model. So we'll just need to go ahead and smooth this out a little bit here. Okay. Like I said, we just need a you know a really solid base mesh to to go ahead and create from. Uh, I'm not really gonna create the side side fence here or anything. All I just want is just that um, basic manipulatable shape here. And I'm definitely gonna be leaving this at um, our Dynamesh level and with Dynamesh on. So I'm just you know working through here just to make sure that we get a um, really solid foundation and shape here. Okay. And, and you can spend as much time as you want to to go ahead and make the base mesh as well as you want. And I think at this point um, my base mesh here is something that I'm happy with. I'll go ahead and just smooth that down real quick. I think I should probably just go ahead and scale this to make it a little bit thinner. Maybe not so fat here. Okay. And maybe we'll go ahead and smooth this out just a little bit more here. Uh, maybe pull in a little bit of pudge for his stomach. Okay.
I'm just looking here just to make sure that this is going to work correctly. Okay, so really no geometric errors or anything. Okay, so I'll go up here and close our Z remesher. Let me go ahead and just turn my Dynamesh back on here. So go ahead and turn that back on. And you can see that that geometry changes. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I save this since this is going to be our base Dynamesh model. So I'll just come up here to Tool, Save As, and I'll just go ahead and save this in my project folder that I have set up for this. So Projects, Touch Plus, Fish Sculpting Collection, and we'll just call this our Base Fish Geo. Okay. So if I go ahead here and turn on the menu, jump back into our Touch Plus um, main folder. And I'll show you what I mean here. Okay, Touch Plus, Fish Sculpting Collection. You can see that we have our Base Fish Geometry. And we're going to be using this geometry to create um, six different fish. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll go ahead and come back and begin the process here of sculpting fish number one, which is a Nemo style fish. Um, and we'll go ahead and come back and begin doing that. So come on back.